After years of playing best friends, sidekicks and supporting characters on screen, Judy Greer finally gets to step up and take on a legendary cinema bad guy, only to meet the business end of his knife. The horror sequel Halloween Kills, in theaters and streaming on Peacock, unleashes masked murderer Michael Myers again on Haddonfield while heroine Laurie Strode, Jamie Lee Curtis, recuperates from a gnarly stab wound, see, end of 2018's Halloween, at a local hospital. Her daughter, Karen, Greer, initially wants everybody to stay there and be protected, including Karen's teen daughter Allison, Andy Mattishock. But she also joins the fray as townsfolk track Michael back to his childhood home. Halloween Kills is a step back for Jamie Lee Curtis' stab happy horror franchise. To save Allison, Karen removes Michael's iconic mask and takes it into the street, luring the villain out so her neighbors can kill him once and for all. But Michael silently fights back and takes out his attackers before murdering Karen. It leaves audiences with a cliffhanger, wondering where Lori, who doesn't know her daughter's dead yet, and the survivors go from here. The next installment Halloween Ends, which begins filming soon, will take a leap in time and catch up with the community in present day, director David Gordon Green says. Everybody has their process and time does a lot to the intellectual realization of these events. But Curtis teases, it is mayhem, by the way, with a capital M. Unfortunately, Greer. 46, won't be a part of the long-running franchise anymore, though she's not at all bitter. In an exit interview, the actress, who next stars in HBO's upcoming The White House Plumbers with Justin Theroux and Woody Harrelson, and the NBC Limbs Reads the Thing About Pam with Renee Zellweger, talks about her Halloween Kills death scene and the deleted ending fans didn't get to see. into a franchise that already has a huge following, I'm not going to lie. I would probably not say that if our first movie hadn't been such a huge hit, but everyone loved the first one so much that it just made me really happy that people got to have it back after so long. Question, I do so much more in the Halloween movies, so my fans are more excited about me. And Ant-Man, they're more excited about Ant-Man and I just happen to stand next to him sometimes. Greer, I saw the original, 1978 film, when I was older and I was a fan, but am scared to death of horror movies. I don't watch tons of them, because I have nightmares, am still afraid of the dark and I travel with a nightlight and am not ashamed to admit it. Greer, I'm still like that. Am even scared watching this movie, and I read the script and was in it. Greer, it was really beautiful. I'm really happy that if I'm going to die in the movie, has the one to kill me. At least it wasn't like falling down the stairs or something. But I also appreciated that my death is not very gruesome. It's more beautiful and cinematic and sort of operatic. So I thought that was a cool way to do it. Greer, they shot something that they didn't put in the movie at the end, which is Laurie stopping out of the hospital with a knife in her hand. I got to see it. It's not the right ending for this story, but it was definitely cool. Jamie Lee 
Curtis talks a hospitalized Lori in Halloween Kills. Greer, yeah, and I was killed in this, 1997, independent horror movie called Stricken, like my second acting job ever, that I shot right after I graduated from college. I have memories of being thrown in a ditch, but I don't remember exactly. Greer, I could take myself out of it because it wasn't super graphic. It was really hard for me to watch Dylan Arnold, who plays Allison's boyfriend Cameron, get killed because it was so graphic and I love Dylan so much. I immediately texted him after the screening and I was like, your mom can't watch this movie, dude. Trust me. Greer, gosh, I suppose my enemies, whoever they are, laughs. That's a good question. Maybe my husband, because it means I don't have to go away and shoot the next one.